Yay. I need a hat. We're live in three, two, one. Okay. Two, one. Okay. You go first. Me go first. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to Retired Life. It's another beautiful October day in Oregon. Tiny bit of chill in the air, so we've got a fire going. Um, we thought we'd talk to you today about how we travel. I'm not going to say on the cheap because it's still not really cheap, um, but maybe less expensively than a lot of other people do. I've had a lot of people over the years ask me how we take so many vacations. And we have, uh, we have quite a few strategies that we use. So one is, um, you've heard us talk about Thousand Trails. So that's one of the strategies that we use. That ends up costing us, we only have the zone pass, so it costs us $44 a month. And we can go um, 14 nights at a time into a campground. So that's a huge savings right there if you're, if you're using it. And everything that I say is if you're using it. If you're not using it, then it's just a waste of money. Um, another of our strategies that we use is we own a timeshare. We own Worldmark. And we've owned it since uh, 2002. And we've done a lot of traveling with it. And you pay maintenance dues on it every year. So yes, you buy it outright first and then you pay maintenance dues on it every year. But those maintenance dues ends up costing us, so like for a one bedroom unit, maybe a hundred, $125 a night, depending on, you know, when and where we go and all that. Um, and that's, that's pretty darn cheap for a, uh, for an actual condo. It's not a motel room. It's an actual condo it has a kitchen. So we, you know, save a lot of money by buying our food and eating in. Um, uh, Costco is a, is a great savings for when you're going condo camping, um, we hit Costco and save a lot of money by buying in bulk for our entire trip. So they also have really cheap alcohol if you're in Hawaii, just saying. Not that we were, would know. We, Not, we've been told. Yeah. Yeah. We heard it from a friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that we've done for many years is... Um, utilize our, our credit card. So uh, we started out with Hawaiian Airlines uh, on our second trip over. Um, they were advertising their credit card on board on the way home. And I said, oh, well, I could do that. So we got a credit card and, you know, of course we got the sign up bonus um, and we tend to use our credit card for everything. Um, don't try that if you don't, if you're not actually good with your money. Don't try doing that, but we're real good with our money. So we put everything on our credit card and every month we pay it off in full. So we never get interest charges or anything like that. And we have taken, ouch, ooh, that burnt. <laughs> Oops. How many trips have we taken to Hawaii now for free on our miles, do you think? Two round trips would be either five or six now. And that's in the last for, 20 years. That's for both of us. That's not just for one. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, a few years ago, we stopped going to Hawaii so much, um, especially when I was a travel agent. We really wanted to travel to different places. I wanted to travel different places. And so I switched my card over to an Alaska Miles card. Now, with Alaska Miles, you get a companion fare every year. So you buy one ticket and your companion flies for it's it ends up being like one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty bucks, something like that. Um, so, again, depending on where you're going, that's a that's a pretty cheap flight for for your companion to go with you. Southwest also has something like that, which I've never tried, but uh, I may be trying that in the future. Um just recently, I found a group, a Facebook page. It's called JGOOT. That's J-G-O-O-T. And it stands for Just Get Out of Town. Um, and I've learned some new tips and tricks from them since I've joined them. So um, I've had a chase card for years. 
and I, I've always just used my rewards points for um, buying restaurant gift cards. So I get to go to Applebee's once in a while or um, Olive Garden or Red Robin. Those are some of my favorites and that's what I've just always used my rewards points for. After I joined JGoot, I found out that those rewards points can actually be transferred to um, certain airlines uh, and certain hotels. And so they're a lot more valuable to me anyway, using them that way than they are um, just buying restaurant gift cards. Uh, Cause I like to go places. Lots of places. What else do we do to save money and stretch our budget or travel dollars? Well, part of it is we, we shop a lot of sales too, like for grocery shopping. Now I'm not a coupon clipper by any means, but if you're going to be in the grocery store and happen to see a sale on, let's, let's just say a can of corn, and it's a really good price, but you don't need corn right now. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll buy the corn because it's not like we're not going to eat it eventually. So you might save 30 to 50% on a sale on an item like that. Well, okay, that's, that's only going to be a couple of bucks maybe each time you go. But if you go every week, you know, times 52, you know, now you're up around a hundred bucks just for the corn. So I think, you know, buying stuff kind of on sale or clearance or I think that's a good way of doing things too. And it doesn't just have to be groceries. It, you know, it can really be anything. Yeah, we do shop a lot of sales for um, most, most things that we buy. We tend to shop sales. Um, and it does end up you know, saving you a lot of money. May not save you a lot of time, you know, waiting for that sale to come around or or shopping around for the best deals or, you know, something like that. But um, it does save us money. So the more money I have in my pocket, the more money I can spend on travel. Well, another thing too is when we do travel, a lot of times we go in the shoulder season, which is usually just before school lets out and just after school goes back um, and maybe even right after the holidays at the first of the year, people aren't traveling as much. So you get better deals. I mean, your snorkeling trip, it may be buy one, get one half price or something. Well, half price isn't a lot, but guess what? Add all those up through the year and you know, it saves you money. You know, half half of a snorkel trip probably can be anywhere from, depending on your trip, you know, thirty to hundred bucks per, per per that trip. And you know, a hundred dollars. Let's see, how many beers is that? I'm trying to think. Oh, <laughs> depends on where you're buying it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and what flavor it is. Happy hours. Yeah, happy hours. Oh, that, happy hours are are really good way to save money yes um and whether you drink or not they have happy hour food and that that can save you some money and then yeah. you don't have to cook that evening also right and we do that's another way we save money is, is we cooking? have a kitchen usually when we go somewhere especially at our resorts there's a kitchen and we do a lot of our own cooking we'll probably eat out an average of three times a week and dinner is probably only one of those we'll do lunches yeah we or tend breakfast. to do lunch because again lunches are are less expensive than dinner and a lot of times you get the same food but at lunch they just charge you less sometimes yeah. it's even like the same portion amount sometimes it's smaller which is fine um but they just charge less for lunch than they do for dinner. So that's another strategy when, for saving money. When we go to Kona, which is on the big island in Hawaii, uh, most of the best beaches are 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. What I say north, I think they call it west. 
and in heading that direction. You know, you can't really choose which direction you call it. It either is north or it's west. No, I, I use north. Okay. <laughs> we'll say northwest. So we're going northwest. <laughs> we'll split the difference there. But on the way to the beaches, you may not be hungry, but still you're going to come back, and there just happens to be a Costco right on the main road. So we will actually go on and get Costco dogs, you know, buck and a half. So you get two of those for a meal and three bucks for dinner. Now, some people don't <laughs> like Costco dogs, and you're thinking to yourself right now, ooh, ick, if that's what you do to save money, I want no part of it. I actually like Costco dogs. Yeah, none of this stuff we're telling you have to do. We're telling you what we do to save money. There's mm -hmm. other things that you can do, um, but this is just some of the stuff that we do. Now, when I was a travel agent and we were traveling quite a bit and we, we went on a lot of cruises, um, those were savings that I got for being a travel agent. And I, I just really don't want to get into that because a lot of people, you know, you're not a travel agent and it takes a lot of time and effort to become a travel agent. So that's not really a road a lot of people want to go down. I happen to love traveling, so that was a good that was a good job for me. I even became a travel agent, but I never really used it. <laughs> but oh well. <laughs> it was fun to have. So and the conferences <laughs> are fun that you go to. And so Lynn mentioned a few minutes ago about shoulder season. If you don't know what shoulder season is, if you've never heard the term, it's basically um, so if you have a destination and the most popular times to go are going to be when the weather's the best for that destination. So it's not too hot. It's not cold. You know, it's just right. And people want to be right in that time frame. Well, so shoulder season is right on the edges of those. Either it's getting too hot and people don't want to go there anymore, or it's getting into winter and people don't want to go there. It's it's a uh, it's still a really good time to go because the weather hasn't gotten like incredibly hot yet or it hasn't gotten really cold yet you're just on the edge of of perfect and um, hotels actually reduce their prices during shoulder season and it's not quite low season prices um, but they do reduce them so you're you have a real good possibility of still getting in on really good weather like you want um, but you are getting a little bit of a price break on it and the other really great thing about shoulder season and off season travel both is that you're not putting up with the crowds of all the people that are there and i actually prefer to travel uh, during shoulder season or even during the off season um, you're, you're not getting the same experience but i i I think I like it better because I'm not having to deal with all the people in the crowds and um, and I am paying less. So, so both of those things make me happy. Oh, definitely. And our uh, the timeshare that we own works really well for that kind of stuff, um, using shoulder seasons and stuff, because sometimes we don't have to use our points. We can just buy into it. Uh, and then at a reduced rate, mind you, it's, oh, it's yeah. less than what the general public would pay. So there's another thing that saves you money. You save your credits for the better seasons and you can reserve with your credits. And then you take your little trips on either bonus time or you rent credits from other buyers or owners. I'm sorry. So that is great now not everybody has like a shoulder season like when it comes to our timeshare like anywhere tropical they don't consider anything a down season because it's always nice there so like hawaii we have like three different levels and hawaii is always the hawaii the Hawaii level. It is. Hawaii. <laughs> the highest level. <laughs> and, but, it, you know, we, we prepare for that. 
Another thing that we do to save money, speaking of Hawaii, is we go for two weeks. If you go for one week, half of the money you spend is getting there. So if you go for two weeks, you've now just abled yourself to go for another week for free later. If you look at it that way, it doesn't mathematically work out that way, but that's kind of the way it works. The last time we were there was last December, and we were there for 30 days. We should be able, we should be able to go for free now, right? <laughs> And just a little side note here on that is I believe together, because Red has went, I think, three times more to Hawaii than me. She's had a house-sitting thing and another gig she did while she was over there. Um, but I believe that the two of us together are right around 350 days in the last 20 years. So we've almost spent a year in Hawaii. If you can't tell, we really love Hawaii. Yeah. It's one of our favorite destinations. It's it's the closest for us. It is. It's the closest tropical place. Yeah. Because we're on the on the west coast and so to get to the Caribbean we have to go all the way to the east coast of the United States and then a little bit more. So um I well, kinda envy people who are from the East Coast. You yeah. can just hop on a quick two hour flight and be in the Caribbean. And we do have Mexico. I mean, it's it's close for us. It's a lot closer than Hawaii, but the overall vibe isn't the same. You just, whenever you get to Hawaii, you're just kind of like, you, you breathe in really, really deep and let it out. And for the rest of your trip, you're relaxed. So it it's just awesome over there. So another strategy that you can use for, um, this goes for airline flights, and I don't know, I'm not sure it works so good on hotels because I don't book a lot of hotels, so I'm not real knowledgeable about that. Um, but it works for airlines and car rentals, and that is booking as soon as you can, as soon as you know um that you're going so airline tickets you can book out um, 330 days in advance of your trip so um, that's usually in that area is where you're going to find your your better prices a lot of times it doesn't always work like that but um, if you kind of keep an eye on it and you know what prices you should be looking for then when you do see a really great price you can you can jump on it and rental cars um, I have definitely found that if I book them a year out in advance uh, and then I check them again, usually I start checking two to three months before we go to see if the prices have dropped. And almost always they have gone up in price, not down. I have gotten a couple of times where I've gotten to reduce my price on my car rental car. But, you know, that's another strategy. Just keep checking back because it may come up cheaper and you can rebook and cancel the old one and you've just saved yourself some money. So, yep. so saving money takes work, but to me it's worth it. Greta puts a lot of time into these vacations and I put a lot of time into enjoying them. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, if you've got the time and you, you really want to pay attention if you want to go cheaper and more often. Um, I always consider my time as free. Because if I'm not planning my vacation. And my time is even freer. Just yeah, saying. That's right. <laughs> uh, of course, one of the things is we're retired. But for the people that still watch TV, which we don't. We haven't now for a couple of years. Um, you, If you're not looking for your vacation, then you're probably going to be sitting in front of the TV watching TV. Or, heaven forbid, doing housework. <laughs> it's always an excuse to get out of housework, planning a vacation. <laughs> and we have used these strategies long before we ever retired. So yes. they're, they're things that anybody can do. You don't have to be retired to no. use these strategies. 
Yeah, so just, you know, and take advantage when you get wherever you're going. Actually, even before, um, do do a little bit of homework on, we'll, we'll say, like Mexico. Okay, do you want to take a fishing trip, an all-day fishing trip? Well, look up who offers the best kind of trip the right time of year for the fish you might be interested in. And then a lot of them will tell you your price or their price if you ask them. I mean, there's people that are, you can pay a lot of money for a four-hour fishing trip or a three-hour tour. Hello again. <laughs> but anyway, um, squirrel. Um, there is ways to save money in other areas. Crazy. I mean, if you if you plan on going on a deep sea fishing trip and you're in Colorado, you didn't do your homework. So that's that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. That's a little extreme, obviously. But see what there is to do there. Watch watch some YouTube videos. Um Yeah, watch Retired Life. We'll yeah, give you exactly. A... We'll help you out all we can. You betcha. <laughs> But there are other videos. I mean, probably just about anywhere you want to go, there's a video out there on what there is to do there. And we get a lot of our ideas for that. Our next vacation, I've been studying up on that, and there's not a heck of a lot to do there. Perfect. Sun, <laughs> swim up far, lounge chairs. Enough said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll tell you, having been a travel agent, I know that there are a lot of people who do not like to travel this way. They don't, they're not interested in saving money. They don't care um, about, about reducing their cost at all. What they want is um, they want the experience that they want and they're willing to pay for it. And if you're one of those people, more power to you. Yep. I got, I got no qualms with that, but um, and we have taken trips like that. We just yeah. don't, we don't always travel like that. As a matter of fact, we mostly do not travel like that. We mostly travel, um, more, more towards the budget end. These flies are driving me crazy. I know the flies are really bad right now. Um, yeah. So people will, they'll book, take a 10 day bus tour. So it, you get there, everybody comes together as a group, and everybody travels together as a group. When the bus stops, you get off and go, look, you've got an hour. you got to get back on the bus, and you got to go to the next spot. And then you'll stop for lunch. They give you maybe an hour and a half to eat lunch. Then you got to get on the bus and go to the next stop. Now, that is not us. Um, Although I have taken a couple of trips like that, and I actually did enjoy them. Right. But... Lynn's never joined me on those. No, thank goodness. Because <laughs> that wouldn't be for me. Some locations, that's really, it's really a good choice. Like China. Um, well, yeah. I went to China and I was really glad that I was on a tour. I was on a bus um, with somebody driving me who, you know, took me to places where they spoke English. I still got to see all the things that I wanted to see. Um, but I didn't have to stress about traveling in a foreign country that, I kind of felt was not 100% friendly towards me. So that gave me a little bit of comfort level there. So well, and there are times when it, it definitely, that comfort level is is good to have. Even in Hawaii, there's places you don't go. There's locals that just don't appreciate tourists in their neighborhood. Well, most of the tourist mm -hmm. areas, there's not a lot of locals there and you won't hear a lot. Now, in general, I'm not slamming the Hawaiian people. No, because they're lovely. They are. They really are. But, you know, they they want their time away. It would be like your boss coming to your house and having, having a conversation about work tomorrow. When they see us as tourists, that's kind of the way they're looking at it, too. It's like, don't don't come to my house. Don't be in my neighborhood. And not all places are like that. There's just some that are known and again you know videos or just surfing the internet you'll you'll find that information out there i know that we got into one 
on the Wahoo once, and we got in an area, and we didn't have any issues, but you could tell that the people were looking at us and wondering, why are we there? So we just kindly left the area, and we didn't make a ruckus. We just we left them alone, and I get it. I really do. Everybody likes their uh, everybody likes their privacy. So respect that. Yes. And you'll get along great. And that's why you see all this nice brushy area behind us, flowers and shrubs and trees. So as a like side note to that. Too. What's that? Because we like our privacy too. We do. Our last video was actually filmed just on behind the banana tree behind Rada there. That's where our floating deck is at. So you can't even see our house from the deck. And we can't see really the gazebo from here. So it's kind of cool. We actually have privacy from ourselves. For when you piss me off. <laughs> and she can't find me because I'm hiding on the floating deck. <laughs> I know how to handle a frying pan. Not the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Not sure what huh. else we got here. Except, Nothing damn, except these flies. flies. Yeah. They know that their time is coming and they're they right. like sweet stuff, so they're all over us. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> or like getting drunk and that's why they're sucking our blood. <laughs> I'm the type of person that goes ballistic when a fly comes in my house. So this is really really frustrating yeah. me. I hate them. And I thought it would be a good idea to do this in front of a fire, so the fire has made it even hotter. I mean, it, it was a pretty nice warm day, and we're both over here sweating. <laughs> Perfect conditions for flies. Good condition for retoritas, too, just oh, saying. Yeah, and beer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You got anything else? Nope. You guys yeah. got any comments or questions? Just. Drop them down below or shoot us an email, and I believe we got email. Yeah, and by the way, that um, that uh, Facebook page that I was talking about, I'll put a link down below the video so that you guys can go find that in case you're interested. They really had do have some really good information on there if you like to if you like to travel and um, if you if you like to save money. So I'll get that for you. Yeah. Anything else? We're ready to wrap it up. I think so. All right. They're probably tired of listening to us. Probably. I'm tired of listening to us. Tired of these flies. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> funny. All right. So um, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe because we're trying to grow our viewership so that we can monetize our videos, of course. I mean, that's we don't actually like to just sit out here and talk in front of the camera. We have a we have a mastermind purpose for this so oh yeah so uh please like and subscribe and until next time it's always five o'clock when you're retired <laughs> <laughs> you thought i was gonna forget it didn't you oh uh -uh. no <laughs> cheers mm. another reason for a second sip <laughs> mm.